Good morning. Welcome to worship today. A special welcome if you're visiting with us. We do invite you to fill out a visitor card. Place that in the offering plate when it goes around as a way for us to connect with you. Also, this morning, we have a clipboard of places to help out with 815 worship, and we're going to send that around. Uh, I'm just saying that last night when we sent it around at the Saturday night service, there was only a couple slots that were left open. So, you know, no pressure on competing against Saturday night. But I'm going to let you figure out how to get it around, but I'm going to start over here because I know Alan's a good reader, and it would be great for him to, to take a couple slots. So that clipboard has to get around to all places. So good luck. I also want to remind you in the list of announcements that we are receiving new members on Sunday, March 15th, and there's information in your bulletins about contact. Uh, also, in the back, we do have the baskets out. Those are for donations to Cornerstone Women's Shelter to purchase bus passes. You can also do that giving via the giving kiosk if you would like, and the baskets are in the back. We do invite you to take your bulletins home with you as there's announcements about our blood drive, blood pressure checks, and as well as a family bowling time event. Uh, so please check those out as well. For our prayers today, we do want to extend our sympathies to Tom Martin and his family. Uh, his mom, Virginia Martin, passed away on Friday, so please Keep all of them in your prayers, as well as Lyle Pedersen and family at the loss of his mother. And we had the funeral for Rose Thomas here on Friday. So we'll keep all of those families in our prayers. This morning, we also have a special announcement. I'd like to invite Jen up front. She's going to use the microphone up front for an announcement. Good morning. My name is Jen, and I sit on the Lutheran Campus, Campus Ministries Board uh, at School of Mines, and I have some tools that I'm hoping that you will use as well. So every year, the Lutheran Campus Ministries has an annual soup chili uh, contest, if you will. Uh, it's a sampling event, and uh, it gets a little competitive, and I would be very excited to know that uh, Calvary uh, adds a few more soups and gets some people there in the in the, at the event. It's on March 22nd at the Serbeck Center Ballroom. It costs $5 to attend, and like I said, you get a little sample of all the different soups, and then you get, vote to, get to vote for your favorite one. Now, if you are a soup or chili maker, you can definitely make a soup to uh, enter in there, or we also need some desserts made as well. So if you are an extremely awesome baker and want to provide two dozen bars, cookies, whatever your choice is, maybe even just a cake, uh, we would be excited to have some additional entries. I did make a sign-up sheet. It is on the volunteer station in the back. So you can just put your name, your number, uh, and uh, let me know if you're gonna make a soup or a uh, dessert of some kind. And again, it's on March 22nd at five o'clock and it costs five dollars to participate. So if you know that your calendar is full and you're like, I still want us to win something, you can buy a ticket and uh, we, we'd be happy to sample the soup on your behalf. So um, there'll be some information in the bulletins coming up in the next couple weeks, but wanted to uh, get your guys' creative juices flowing. Thank you. Those are the announcements that we have this morning. So let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Faithful one, we long to trust your steadfast faithfulness. We yearn to know your life-giving love. Open our eyes and hearts to faithful living. Surround us with your grace. Nourish us with your presence and lead us to eternal life. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen.
When we acknowledge our failings before God, God wipes away our shame. Receive forgiveness, mercy, and love through the gift of God's grace in Christ for you. We will join together to sing our opening hymn. It's number 323, God Love the World. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
with me in praying the prayer of the day. O God of the ages, your creation revolves through seed time and harvest, cold and heat, summer and winter, day and night. When the seasons come and go, and uncertainty looms ahead, we long for the constancy of your love. Give us courage, wisdom, and patience to be your agents of change in the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Lent. <laughs> We're going to sing. It's a gospel piece. We feel like gospel music is spiritual music. It sings to the um, to the pains of life, and Lent is kind of that focus, I think, in our season. So beautiful music, but um, also very powerful. We're going to sing. Order my steps in your word. Thank you. 
Our first reading this morning comes from Genesis 2, verses 15 through 17, and verse 3, verses 1 through 7. The Lord God took the man and put him in the Garden of Eden to till it and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man, You may freely eat of every tree of the garden, but of the tree of knowledge of good and evil you shall not eat. For in the day that you eat of it, you shall die. Now the serpent was more crafty than any other wild animal that the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, Did God say you shall not eat from any tree in the garden? The woman said to the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. But God said, You shall not eat of the fruit of the tree that is in the middle of the garden, nor shall you touch it, or you shall die. But the serpent said to the woman, You will not die, for God knows that when you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was a delight to the eyes, and that the tree was to be desired to make one wise, she took of its fruit and ate. She also gave some to her husband who was with her, and he ate. Then both then the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. Our second reading comes from Romans 5, verses 12 through 19. Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death came through sin, and so death spreads to all because all have sinned, sin was indeed in the world before the law, but sin is not reckoned when there is no law. Yet death exercised dominion from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sins were not like the transgression of Adam, who is a type of one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass, <clears throat> excuse me, for the many died through the one man's trespass, which more surely have the grace of God and the free gift in the grace of the one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for the many. And the free gift is not like the effect of the one man's sin, for the judgment following one trespass brought condemnation, but the free gift following many trespasses brings justification. If because of one man's trespass, death exercised dominion through that one, much more surely will those who receive the abundance of grace and the free gift of righteousness exercise dominion in life through the one man, Jesus Christ. Therefore, just as one man's trespass led to condemnation for all, so, one's man's, so one man's act of righteousness leads to justification and life for all. For just as by the one man's disobedience, the many were made sinners, so by the one man's obedience, the many were made righteous. Gospel according to Matthew, the fourth chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. He fasted 40 days and 40 nights. Afterwards, he was famished. The tempter came in and said to him, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. But he answered, It is written, one does not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. Then the devil took him to a holy city and placed him on the pinnacle of the temple, saying to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down, for it is written, He will command his angels concerning you, and on their hands they will bear you up, so that you will not dash your foot against a stone. Jesus said to him, Again, it is written, Do not put the Lord your God to the test. Again, the devil took him to a very high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world, 
and their splendor. And he said to him, All these I will give to you if you will fall down and worship me. Jesus said to him, Away with you, Satan, for it is written, Worship the Lord your God and serve only him. Then the devil left him, and suddenly angels came and waited on him. Here is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. You may be seated, and will the kids come up and join me up here at the puppet stage? I have a whole bunch of suckers, you're right. I just filled the, <coughs> the container yesterday. Yep. All right. All right. On the count of three, we're going to say puppets come out. One, two, three. Puppets come out. Hello, Snakers. You don't look so good. I am not. Well, what is wrong? I was trying to be a better monster. Well, what is the problem? It is not working. What do you mean? I just don't feel like being better. Tell me more. I want to be nice, but I don't always feel like it. Okay. And I want to share more, but I don't always feel like sharing. Okay. And I want to be more loving, but I don't always feel loving. Why don't you just try to act like it? What? If you act nice, you might start to feel like being nice. Really? If you just share more, you might start to feel like sharing. That would be cool. And if you just act more loving, you might feel more loving. Okay, I get it. If we go through the action, we might change our hearts. Yes. I think I will go help Benny, even if I don't want to. Sounds like a good idea. And I will share my liverwurst and onion sandwich, even when I want to keep it to myself. Sounds like a great idea. And I will treat everyone the best I can, and I might just start to be more loving. Okay, now you're getting it. But let's get back to sharing that liverwurst and onion sandwich. I take it. You want half of it? Yes, I do. Well, let's go and share it. Sounds great. Goodbye, everyone. And have a great weekend. And the puppeteers don't have to stay there. They can go back. Thank you, girls. Let us pray. Gracious God, we thank you for being with us. Help us to hear your words. Help us to know you more. Open our hearts our ears, and my mouth. We pray this in your name. Amen. So last week I took a video after the uh, 1015 service. I snuck out and I went over to a place and I'm going to show you a video right now. Read the word, please. It's just a short segment of the song. But I want to read those words so you hear them. I pray to the Creator who lives among the clouds, Holy Grandfather, 
You are my leader. And I want to say thank you. The cross, it is yours and very sacred. I recorded this at Wayatan Lutheran. Most of you have heard me say something about Wayatan in the last couple years. But if you're not, it's the congregation I used to serve over on the north side of town, Animosa and Haynes. And we're going to go the fourth Sunday of the month. We're going to worship there at 1130. And I encourage you to sign up. We're only going to take a few people because they're filling up. But I was really struck with pride when I looked at the drum the other day. I know you saw drummers, but I want you to see the, the actual people. This group of men has determined that they're going to teach kids the language of their people. And they're working really hard. And some of them stumbled through the door as not really Christian. They're believers, but not really Christian. Because they don't really like what the Christian church always does or did. But we watch the Holy Spirit grabbing a hold of them and hooking them in tight. There was two young boys sitting in the front pew who were drumming and singing along. They're Sorrell's kids. Sorrell isn't always able to get them to church because sometimes life has got its struggles. But aunt and, aunt, aunt and uncle bring them every week. They're sitting in that exact same spot. I've been there three weeks. They're sitting always in the same spot. And they're there early, ready to go. And you could see them like a sponge soaking up water, soaking up their language, singing in pride, and they sing out really loud and wonderfully. And you see even with life struggles around them, they know where a home is. They know where they belong. And while they know where they belong, they know the Savior who loves them and cares for them. They're not the only ones there. Two, two people you didn't see was the young lady singing on the side and her mom. Her name is Kaylee, the daughter and I see her bolt past me as the song starts. She ran in from the kitchen to make sure she could sing. She's one who doesn't have a whole lot of struggles in life, even though everybody struggles around her. She knows with pride who she is and who she's supposed to be. She's going to make a difference not just in her family, but she's going to make a difference in her community. But we see her running to sing her song in her, in her own language. And then there was a drummer. One of the men now who, when, he was, when I was there, he was not a man. He was a boy. His name is Wakia, and he got on trouble a lot. A lot. A real lot. But I watch him now as a young adult putting all that stuff away. And he's now teaching the kids what was taught to him as a kid. Teaching them about a Savior that loves them even when they make mistakes. Even when they get it wrong. The Savior who wraps their arms around him and says, it's okay, but you can be better. The Savior that is their leader. And I think about all the changes that have happened. For them to be able to sing in their own language with their own drum. I think about all the changes that had to take place. Because there was a time, as we all know, that they were told to put it away. It didn't belong. Put it away cut your hair, and look like me. But at some point in time, we don't get smarter in every way, but we get smarter in some ways. And we realize that we are called to sing 
dance and praise God in our own language. We know another person who really fought for that. Maybe you know him. Maybe you don't. I'm assuming all of you know who Martin Luther is. And 500 years ago, he pounded nails on the door that said, you should be able to sing a song in your own language. So people weren't coming to church singing in Latin when they didn't understand Latin, falling asleep in the pews and not being changed. Martin Luther kept looking out in the community and saying, I want to see change in people. I don't want them to stay the same. I don't want them to come in and sit and not know who Jesus is. Not the Savior that put out his, stretched out his arms and allowed them to be nailed to the cross. Martin Luther real, realized that as a community, change was needed. Change is always needed. Sometimes it's just not the most fun. We all like our familiarity. But sometimes we change in the sake, for the sake of the community. And sometimes that can be uncomfortable. As I was talking with John, who was one of those drummers the other day, he said, you know, I think sometimes people come through the doors and are uncomfortable. And I laughed at him. I said, I was here for four years. I was uncomfortable the entire time. But I'm thankful for it. Because I'm thank, thankful that for those four years of being uncomfortable, I've grown and I've changed. And if I didn't lean into being uncomfortable, I'd have ran out the door. Change brings uncomfortableness, but sometimes it's necessary. We hear in the gospel lesson, Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. Jesus just became baptized, and instead of having a little baptismal party or sitting around and, and rejoicing in it, he's immediately led into the wilderness by the Spirit. The Spirit takes a hold of him and says, you're going in there. And now we know that Jesus would have gone there anyways, because Jesus and the Spirit were so connected. But I think he, we're reminded that he goes by the Spirit for our own sake. Because sometimes we have to know we're being led by the Spirit. And sometimes, as Jesus says, when we go into the wilderness, it isn't a whole lot of fun. Jesus is hungry, and he's being tempted by the devil. And immediately after he gets done, he's going to have to then hear about John the Baptist being turned over. And now I've got to go make my disciples. And constantly, Jesus' life, even though he always knows where he's going, is changing around him. At the end of this Lenten season, we're going to see him, them saying, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna. And at the end of the week, they're going to be yelling, crucify, crucify, crucify. How much change happened in that week? And we see our Savior that leaned in for us. Leaned in and said, I'll be willing to stretch out my arms for each and every one of you. As he does for all of us. This Lenten season, we're going to be focusing on change. Change in the different ways we can do it. My encouragement to you as we talk about it is figure out one way you can lean into change. And what would that be? Because we're being constantly led by the Spirit to reach up to God, to reach into ourselves and our neighbors that are sitting in the pew and reach out into the community. Each one of them has the ability to change us, reaching up to God to remind ourselves that we have fallen short and we need a Savior to save us. Reaching in as we strengthen ourselves and our neighbors in our pews. 
and reaching out to our community that gives us a different global view. May you be the people of God that God has called you to be. May you know the Savior that loves you, will always love you, and stretched out his arms for you today and every day. May you go be the people of God now and always. Lord, we pray. Amen. I invite you to join with me as we confess our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. We'll move into our time of offering.
please stand. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care. And prepare us now to feast on the bread of life, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this in remembrance of me. We join our voices together to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. You may be seated. This is the Lord's table, and all are welcome. We invite you to follow the direction of the ushers. Day by day, your mercies, Lord, attend me, bringing Comfort to my anxious soul. Day by day, the blessings, Lord, you send me. Draw me nearer to my heavenly goal. Love divine, be Savior, lead me to the home I treasure, where at last I'll find eternal rest. And day by day, I know you will provide me strength to serve, wisdom to obey. So I will seek your loving will to guide me for the path I struggle day by day. I will fear no evil of the morrow, and I will trust in your enduring grace, for save your bear life's pain and sorrow till in glory I behold your face oh what joy to know that you are near me oh when my burden grow too great to bear and oh what joy to know that you will hear me when I come, O oh Lord, to you in prayer, day by day, no matter what betide me, you will hold me ever in your hand. Savior, with your 
presence here to guide me. I will reach at last the promised land. When I The body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. God, you are the creator of the changing seasons, and you are also the constant presence in our lives, and we thank you. We ask for your guidance and care as a community of God. Help us to live out our values and our calling in this place. We are mindful as well of our partners in ministry. We thank you for Wyatan Lutheran for what they do for the care of the people of our community. We also are mindful of those congregations that find themselves in times of transition. And we pray for Atonement Lutheran in Piedmont Valley and their ministries. We thank you as well, O oh God, for musicians who sing and play the faith in so many different ways and help us draw closer to you and to what we are to do as your people in this world. Be with us this Lenten season as we hear once again the story of Jesus' life and death. Help it bring a change to our hearts and minds, a change for the sake of community so that we are being led by your spirit. We are mindful as well, O oh God, of those who are hurting, those who have undergone surgeries, those who are in need of healing in mind, body, and spirit. We are especially mindful this day and pray for Richard, Linda, Carolee, Hazel, Charlene, Mark, Thomas, Orland, Charlotte, Leona, Bill, Mary, Lori, Nick, Christy, Mark, Karen, Kevin, Tim, Robert, Liz, Arlene, Kenny, Faye, Suzanne, Jim, Chip, Diane, Sandra, Clarice, Jeannie, Aaliyah, Zane, Jan, Lila, Eunice, Richard, Tate, Bill, John, Terry, Cindy, Betty, Nadine, Vernon, Bob, Matthew, Susan, Delvin, Kirby. We also pray for the families that are grieving the loss of loved ones. We pray for the family of Virginia Martin, the family of Rose Thomas, and the family of Josephine Morrow. Oh God, we also pray for and lift up all military first responders and their families. Living God, we know that sometimes there are prayers that it's hard for us to put into words, and yet you know our hearts and our minds. Guide us each and every day as we live to be your people. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you, 
now and forever. Amen. I invite you to stand for our closing hymn, Bless Now a God the Journey. God, oh, now the journey that all your people make, the path through noise and silence, the way of give and take. The trail is found in desert and wind the mountain round, then leads beside Welcome and inspire all with grace, courage, and love. Reach up, reach in.